Hey folks, I'm Bruce Campbell. Don't touch that dial because Profiles is coming right up. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Tiffany Walker. Today's guest is actor Bruce Campbell, the undisputed king of the B-movies, best known for his work in the popular Evil Dead series. As one of Hollywood's busiest actors, Bruce is constantly working on various projects in the industry from movies to video games. After a short break, we'll join our host Mickey Burns as he welcomes the personable Bruce Campbell to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. Bruce Campbell has been a staple of films just outside the Hollywood mainstream for over 20 years. He rose to fame as the star of the cult movie favorite, The Evil Dead Trilogy, and has been busy with recurring roles on TV's Ellen, Xena the Warrior Princess, and Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. So let's join our host Mickey Burns on location at Ashford and Simpson Sugar Bar in the heart of New York City as he welcomes the popular Bruce Campbell to Profiles. Oh, you bastards. Why are you torturing me like this? Why? <laughs> Shut up. Bruce Campbell. Mickey, how you doing, sir? Well, welcome to our show, Thank Profiles. Uh, for our viewers, the undisputed king of the modern B-movies. <laughs> Uh, also best-selling author, creator of video games, author of, co of a comic book series, and basically the jack-of-all-trades in today's entertainment industry. Well, that's dangerous because the show that I did called Jack of All Trades got canceled. <laughs> so no more Jack of All Trades. Uh, currently celebrating the release of your latest book, uh, Make Love the Bruce Campbell Way, chronicles the life of a hard-working B-movie actor finally getting a role in an A-movie. Wow, after all these years, Bruce. <laughs> well, the good news is it's fiction. So it, none of it happened, but it's me taking myself as a lead character oh. and projecting myself into what would happen if I finally got in you know, a real picture. No, okay. <laughs> so that's why, hence the novel. In the book, which was uh, you know, hilarious, and I guess that's your personality. I mean, do you take anything it, seriously? I try not to. <laughs> you know, in, in, this, in this world today, I think we're getting, we're getting pretty serious. I think so. So I think it's ready for some lighthearted lunacy. And it's okay to poke fun at the Transportation Security Administration. And, you know, yeah. uh, it's okay. It's and all right. A recent article uh, talking about your career said Bruce Campbell has been a staple of films just outside the Hollywood mainstream for over 20 years. Pretty accurate? Yeah, it's fine. I've been flying under the radar for a long time, and I like it under there. You do? Yeah, they're not trying to shoot you down. That's a good, that's a good, no one can so find it's a good you. place to be. They don't right? know where to get you. But you're still thriving. Yeah, I can make a living and people aren't going through my garbage, you know? <laughs> yeah, you rose to fame while garnering a huge cult following in director Sam Raimi's <laughs> Evil Dead trilogy. Where did it start? Back in Michigan, 1979. Mm -hmm. uh, I met Sam in high school about 1975, and uh, we both started doing amateur movies in high school. We did about 50 of them. We did war films, dramas, comedies, a lot of slapstick, sure. um, because we were sort of unbreakable then. And we would do our own stunts, and we would show them at, in school. And we, we got an A in Civil War class because we made a movie, right. and no one else did. We didn't know, I didn't learn anything about the Civil War, but it didn't matter, we got an A, because we, <laughs> we bothered to get off our butt and make a movie. Then after high school ended, we had this horrible realization of what do we do now? I know you tried college and it wasn't Yeah, it wasn't I made it working. for six months and I got too antsy. I got too eager to do the real thing mm -hmm. rather than learning about theory. Sure. So we gathered and we got a lawyer involved and put a, a limited partnership together to raise money for the first Evil Dead. We got it from doctors and lawyers and dentists. It was sort of the Rocky thing. We just wanted to go the distance. We wanted to make a movie that we could see in our local Cineplex. Wow. You know, and the, the biggest treat for me was finally about four years later. It took us about four years to get the first one made. Yeah. By the time, because we kept yeah. running out of money and raising more, yeah. a little more shooting. Finally got done. I got to go to my, my local showcase cinemas, sit down with the popcorn. I didn't care if there were 100 people there or 1,000 people there. And again, you know, it's a crude movie and got half terrible reviews and some good ones, but it didn't matter because that was our foot in the door. And then you kind of go from there. Was it easier? 
for you and Sam to raise money after the first one? It's weird. It got strange because we got used to raising money from going to people's homes and <laughs> knocking on doors. Now you're knocking on a studio's door. Oh. It's, you're knocking on one door mm -hmm. and hoping that they'll mm -hmm. give you all the money. And they'll give you all the money, but we, we never relished the kind of creative control we had until many, many years later. It's ironic that our first film, we had 100% complete creative co control wow. over every frame of it, good or bad. The second Evil Dead, we lost a little bit of control. The third one was re-edited by Universal. And, you know, they didn't want the Evil Dead name even on it. So uh. by the time you, it was our 12th year of working on these movies, if you added it all up, wow. the last one we had the least control on. So there's ironies everywhere. That's why I like to go back and stay in independent films. Because there's nothing like having total control. No, not really. And that way, because I'm happy to take responsibility. If I do yeah. something and it stinks... It's your fault. Let me, I'll raise my hand. I can handle that. Right. But if it's good, I don't want five other guys dogpiling saying, yeah, I'm yeah, glad yeah, I made yeah. that picture for you, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who needs that? Yeah. In the book, in the book, in your latest book, <clears throat> you describe how... Uh, you immerse yourself in this role uh, for your first A movie. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm going to be a method actor now. <clears throat> oh. Because I'm terrified. It's Mike Nichols. Mike Nichols He's going to eat me alive eat if I'm not alive. ready. And you, you talk about immersing yourself in the role as actually, you know, practicing as a doorman at the Waldorf. Yeah, that's right. I get a, I get a day job at the Waldorf. Oh, you got into a lot of trouble there. Yeah, I get in trouble with the Secret <laughs> Service there, which kind of haunts Service me for the rest of the And a hotel guest. Yes, a certain Colin Powell, who then was the uh, Secretary of State. So it, it, it's, the book is basically my lame attempt to get into the real world and with disastrous results. Because I can't help right. myself as a B-movie guy. A quote about your approach to acting. You said, there's a large element of me in every role I do. Actors who say they dive into a character are either schizophrenic or lying. Or both. Or both. You believe that? I do. Because, you know, playing a hero, it's me on my best day or me on my worst day. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you've got clever quips, it's, it's, it's you when you're right on top of it. But to say, like I saw an actress once, she was doing a horror film, and she goes, oh, it took so long to shed that, the skin of that character. I'm like, yeah, yeah. what is your problem? Yeah. <laughs> what world are you living in? <laughs> I don't know, it's interesting. You just are who you are, yeah. and well, I don't no reason to hide from right. it. In 1981, Bruce, along with buddy Sam Raimi, raised $350,000 to make the first Evil Dead movie. Six years later, they were able to raise 10 times as much cash for the sequel, Evil Dead 2. We'll be back with much more profiles after these important messages. Welcome back to Profiles. I'm Tiffany Walker. Bruce Campbell has appeared in over 70 movies and has made numerous appearances on television. He's made a career out of playing characters with great panache. In 1993, he won the audition for the lead role in The Adventures of Briscoe County by doing a backflip right in the office where he was being auditioned. Now back to Mickey Burns with Bruce Campbell. Now, you've become a, a B-movie legend, and from what I understand, B-movies, which I didn't know, uh, have a fan base that is enormous. It's, it's, it's under the mainstream. You know, you yeah. won't get those um, screaming fans for the 90210 actors. You won't yeah, really get yeah. that kind of a frenzy, but they're people who are much more devoted. Um, to me, a, a mainstream movie, a thousand people see it once. A cult movie, one person sees it a thousand times. So it's a much yeah, more devoted yeah, aspect. Yeah. They know the lines of dialogue. They, they know what you were wearing. They, they know every sequel. You know, they ask you when I see them at a book signing, they go, oh, so you're going to be in Cherry Hill a couple of months from now? See you there, you know? It's, they're tuned in. They go to your website. They read your stuff. They're, they're, right. they're and right on top of This, of course, it. was reinforced when you had your first book. Was it If, Chin, if, Chins, if Chins Could, could Kill? Kill? Yeah. Confessions uh, of a B-movie actor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when you were doing your book tour, uh, St. Martin's Press mentioned to me that uh, of all of their authors, that you set records. Well, I think I was willing to go the distance. That's one thing, too. My dad was in advertising for 35 years. And he always said to me, you know, Bruce, you can do the greatest uh, performance in a movie. Yeah. And if no one sees it, then you might as well be, you know reading the phone book in your backyard. Uh, that you got it. If you want people to see your work, 
you got to, you know, get get out there and get it going. And so I break it into thirds, kind of. The first third is creating it. You got to come mm -hmm. up with an idea. What are you going to do? A movie, yeah. video game, comic, whatever it is. And then you got to find the money for it. That's phase two, and you got to make it. So sure. then once it's made, there's a lot of filmmakers who go, "Well, I made my movie. I, I, oh. I did my end. I did. No, I did my bit, but it's not true. It. No, now you put your marketing hat on, sure. and then you get out there. And it's not like it's." shameless promotion it's necessary promotion yeah. and a lot of actors want to do the minimum oh no yeah, well my favorite yeah, was they, watching it there was a there was a very famous actor who you hear this from reporters all the time that when they did their first movie they would do station ids oh make sure you watch this next saturday night and they would travel around the country doing pr then as they get more famous the guy came back several years later mm -hmm. now the all the press has to come to the actor Ah. Now they got to come to the Four Seasons, oh. and in his suite, where he doesn't get out of that chair, the only thing that changes is the reporter. Sure. Now there's a list of questions you can't ask the person, oh. and will they do a station ID? What are you, crazy? crazy. Get yeah, out of here. Yeah, you got yours. So I don't get that, no, and I think no. it's just ignorance on actors' part to somehow think that it's not important. Mm -hmm. I don't get that.